In this lesson we're going to be continuing our look at the idea of rational expressions. We're going to be extending that. In a previous lesson I looked at a rational function which was in this form. f of x was 1 over g of x. So in that case my numerator was 1. In this case we're going to extend this because now we're going to be taking a look at a quotient between one polynomial and another polynomial. Now some of this work is going to go back to what we've been looking at previously which is polynomial division, the idea of finding the quotient and uh, a remainder if necessary. So now we're looking at something much more generic although we are still only considering polynomials. So in this case both p at x and q of x are polynomials that we've been looking at for this unit and the previous unit. Whenever we have a denominator we do have to consider discontinuities which is any time that the function, the polynomial function q of x is equal to zero. There are two outcomes that we really have to take care of or that we have to keep in mind there. One of them is we might have a factor between p of x and q of x that divides out of this expression. So a common factor that's going to divide out and it's no longer going to be visible. It's no longer going to be present in the final answer. If that occurs, that's known as a whole. So if we have a common factor here in the form x minus a, if we can divide that out of both p of x and q of x, we end up with a whole at x equals a. If that doesn't happen, we end up with a number of factors in the denominator. Well, whenever we have a factor that could be equal to zero, we have to set a restriction there because that's going to result in a, a vertical asymptote. So essentially what we have are discontinuities. In past courses you've thought about these as restrictions and they are both of those things. Uh, when we talk about discontinuities graphically that means that's a place on the graph where we're not allowed to go. So let's move forward here and see how some of these things play out or some how some of these other um, details play out. So we talked about holes, we talked about vertical asymptotes. There are also horizontal and oblique asymptotes. Now horizontal asymptotes are things that you are already familiar with. In general you dealt with a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero and in some cases you might have dealt with horizontal asymptotes that had been transformed up and down just using the q value in a standard vertical transformation. An oblique asymptote is a, an asymptote that is neither vertical nor horizontal. So essentially it's, it's a standard straight line that's in the form y equals mx plus b. In a more advanced case you can actually have oblique asymptotes or sorry you can have another form of asymptote which can actually follow a curve. But when we talk about an oblique asymptote, we're talking about an oblique line. So a, a, a line in the form y equals mx plus b. As I note here, horizontal and oblique asymptotes, they have no effect on continuity. They don't cause jumps across the graph. What they control is n behavior. And n behavior is this idea as x approaches infinity and as x approaches negative infinity. Something we've talked about at other times in the course. So whenever we're talking about horizontal and oblique asymptotes, you're just thinking about really large positive or large negative values of x. So if I start off with my function f of x, which is made up of this division, this quotient, p of x over q of x, if the order of this polynomial, polynomial p of x, is less than or equal to the order of the polynomial q of x, that means we're going to have a horizontal asymptote. So for example, if I had x over x squared plus 1, this is order 1, this is order 2. Order 1 is less than order 2, this has a horizontal asymptote. If I had x minus 3 over x plus 2, this is order 1 in the numerator, this is order 1 in the denominator. They are the same order, they are equal, which once again means we have a horizontal asymptote. Now we can kind of show that quite conclusively and we're going to do that by performing the actual division here. And you can see here I have a linear divided by another linear. 
So what is the horizontal asymptote? Because even though I can tell you these have an or, a horizontal asymptote, I haven't told you what that is. So how would I find that? And the way I'm going to do that with you is I'm going to perform this division. So I've just, this is the same thing I had on the previous page. So I'm going to go through the, these three steps. I will perform the division. I will express this as a quotient and a remainder. And then I will look at n behaviors. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to divide x plus 1 into 2x. So if we take a look at this, we start here. What value or what do I have to multiply x by to get 2x? So to get a 2x here, I have to multiply x by 2. And this is, if we want to line things up, this is 2x plus 0. So 2 times x gives me 2x. 2 times 1 gives me positive 2. 0, 2x minus 2x is obviously 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And so that is my remainder, is negative 2. So now what I get is f of x is equal to, it started off as 2x over x plus 1. But that means it is the same as, and just to remind you, I'm just going to write over here at the side. If we take a function and divide it by something, the answer is a quotient plus the remainder over the divisor, the thing we divided by. So in this case, I've got this function divided by this. All of this together, actually, you know what, let me just change that very quickly. Rather than using f, that could be confusing. So let's say some polynomial. So a polynomial divided by something. The reason I'm saying this is because this whole piece, that is this whole piece. So the function f of x is the polynomial divided by is 2x over x plus 1. And what's that equal to? It's equal to the quotient. The answer here, my quotient was 2, plus the remainder over the original divisor. And the remainder was negative 2 over the original divisor, which is x plus 1. Now, normally, we wouldn't write it that way. Normally, we would write this as 2 minus 2 over x plus 1. And that part doesn't matter. So I've performed the division. I have expressed as a quotient and remainder using this relationship. And now I'm going to take a look at n behavior. And so what I want you to consider, we can, we can actually write this out as x approaches a really large number. What does f of x do? What does f of x approach? So take a look. Does x approaching infinity have any impact on this 2? No, of course it doesn't. The only thing it affects is this x. So let's imagine this x getting really, really big. So let's imagine a million. 1 million plus 1, well, that's 1 million and 1. What is 2 divided by that really large number? Or even if we put a billion down here, what's 2 divided by a billion? What's 2 divided by a trillion? As we get bigger and bigger numbers, this piece is going to turn into 0. It's going to turn into 2 over a huge number. And so this overall is going to turn into the number 2. Similarly, as x approaches negative infinity, what does f of x approach? And so if I did the same thing, let's take that away. What if I put a really large negative number in here? Well, let's put in negative a billion. Well, negative a billion plus 1 is actually 999999999. That's still a really, really big number. So 2 over a really, really big number is going to be equal to essentially 0. So once again, this whole thing is going to go to 0. And so once again, this goes to 2. So when you write this, when you write out your division using this notation, a quotient plus a remainder, my quotient here describes the horizontal asymptote. 
So my horizontal asymptote in this case is simply the horizontal line y equals 2. This, be, and the reason for that is because this is going to turn into 0. Now that applies, that applies for this condition where the order of the numerator is less than or equal to the order of the denominator. In this case it was equal but we could have shown this um, just as easily if this was 2x and this one was x squared plus 1 we could have gone through that and we would have found that this whole idea we would have gotten a horizontal asymptote a constant and here's the graph 2x over x plus 1 it looks like this it actually looks a lot like a reciprocal function that we're familiar with from the past it's not quite the same the shape is a little bit different it doesn't follow the exact same rules for finding the points but it certainly does look very similar okay now an oblique asymptote on the other hand occurs if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator by exactly one so here we have an order two here we have an order one and in this case we're going to end up with an oblique asymptote so let's go through those exact same steps first thing I'm going to do is perform my division so I'm going to say x plus 1 divided into x squared. I'm going to use a placeholder here of 0x and then plus 4. So what linear value, what linear factor of x do I multiply x by to get x squared? Well, that's going to be an x times x gives me x squared. And then x times positive 1 gives me plus 1x. Perform my subtraction. This is x squared minus x squared is 0. 0x minus x is negative x. Bring down my positive 4. So what number do I multiply x by to get negative x? Well, that's going to be negative 1, giving me a negative x. And then negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. And that's going to give me a remainder of 4 minus negative 1 is positive 5. So there's my remainder. So my division statement can then be written. So all of this tells me that f of x is equal to what? Here is my quotient, x minus 1. And my remainder was positive 5. So that's plus 5 over the original divisor, which is 5 over x plus 1. So I've performed the division. I have now expressed that as a quotient and I now have to consider the end behavior. Now you don't have to write out the end behavior if you don't want to. You, once you get familiar with this you're going to be able to do this in your head. So in this case let's take a look. What's going to happen is I'm really going to focus on this part and so as x gets really large I'm going to write this out in two steps. So as x gets really large, what happens to x plus 1? That's in the denominator. So what can you tell me? If x gets really large, then x plus 1 also gets really large. And so if that's the case, then what is 5 over something that's really large? What's that going to get close to? So as x plus 1 gets really large, what's 5 over something really large? that's going to get closer and closer to zero. And the same thing is true if I said as x approaches negative infinity then x plus one what does it do? Well it also approaches negative infinity and then so what does five over negative infinity approach? Well that's also going to approach zero. A little bit later in the course we're actually going to distinguish between the idea that this one is actually you know what that's this is worth mentioning now so I'm going to introduce this notation maybe not formally but it's something for people to think about for going forward this one is approaching positive infinity so this is approaching 5 over a really big positive number so this is approaching positive inf or sorry this is approaching 0 but it's doing it from the positive side and so that's a notation we're going to be looking at later I'm just putting it there now I don't think I should necessarily be focusing on it too much now 
but it's too interesting to leave and it will help you with understanding graphs. This one is 5 over negative infinity which means even though this is approaching 0, 5 over a really big negative number is going to become a negative number. So this is approaching 0 from the negative side, meaning it's really, really small negative numbers. These are really, really small positive numbers. Now, what we wanted to find here was actually what is the oblique asymptote. So now that I've looked at the end behavior, what can we say about the oblique asymptote? This whole piece is going to go to zero whether it goes to zero from above or zero from below it's going to zero so here is my oblique asymptote which we use the letters OA short form for that so this line and that's a linear my oblique asymptote is the line y equals x minus one and I should have a graph of that on the next page and here it is so there's my original function, x squared plus 4 over x plus 1, which I can rewrite using a quotient and remainder form. Here is that oblique line, x minus 1. And take a look. Actually, the other thing I want to point out here, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. As x approaches positive infinity, my graph approaches x minus 1, but because because this approached 0 from above, then that means it's above x minus 1, because this is x minus 1 plus a really small positive number. So this is x minus 1, and then above it is a really small number, so it's going to be above. Over here, as x approaches negative infinity, we are slightly below x minus 1, so it approaches it from below. So more on that will come later in the course. So there is your assigned work. Obviously, we're focusing on vertical asymptotes, which are not new. Horizontal asymptotes, a slightly different look at them. And oblique asymptotes, which is probably new to most of you.